Hello folks, the purpose of this video is to show you the results of my ultra low power trial as uh, a low power data logger. So my trial aim was to produce the lowest power consuming data logger that I could and I was using uh, I'm using an ESP32 and a BME280 pressure temperature humidity sensor. The results have frankly surprised me. I thought I was going to get a fantastic battery power duration. I didn't. Here's my circuit arrangement. Two lithium iron phosphate cells in a battery holder, 3.3 volts, a BME280 uh, for temperature, pressure, humidity, and a B an ESP32 on a breakout board. No regulator. There's the circuit diagram. On the left there are two IFR18650 lithium iron phosphate cells to form a battery at 1500 milliampere hour each 3000 milliampere hour total capacity the good thing is they're 3.3 volts so i don't need to use a voltage regulator and they can the esp32 can be powered directly from that the esp32 itself's on a breakout board with nothing else that, that's it the BME280 is simply connected via the I2C bus power on ground and there's also a link from ADC channel 0 VPN to the power to measure uh, cell voltage while the logging trial was proceeding and there's a 10 microfarad smoothing capacitor to remove any supply perturbations. This is my uh, test setup and aim is to read the BME sensor for pressure, temperature, humidity, read the ADC channel for supply voltage, upload those readings to ThingSpeak and go to sleep for 10 minutes. It takes 3 seconds to read, 10 minutes to sleep. The minimum possible hardware solution, so no UART consuming 20 odd milliamps, no regulator, no LED, a bare bones setup. So the trial aim is to upload results by an RF link, use the lowest possible amount of power and run on two AA cells, ideally alkaline, for a year. In terms of power consumption, I monitored the circuit over a 48 hour period and determined that the active power consumption averaged over that 48 hours for the ESP32 is 115.5 milliamps. It's actually quite a lot of perturbation on that supply demand peaking at 300 milliamps going down to about um, 115 that average is 115.5 in sleep mode deep sleep mode it, it the ESP32 takes a consistent 5.6 microamps the BME280 measured out at 720 microamps when measuring and in deep sleep 0.12 microamps. Now let's calculate the power consumption demand in milliampere hours. So to calculate the on demand in milliampere hours is the number of events per hour times the duration of the event in in hours. So it's a milliampere hour, and so it's if it's seconds, it's divided by 3,600 seconds in an hour times event current. So it's six events per hour. 60 over 10 is 6. It takes 3 seconds to upload the data and go to sleep. So there's the hour and then it takes 115.5 milliamps and 0.72 milliamps. While it's doing that, giving a total demand of 0.5811 milliampere hours. I'm deliberately keeping it high precision, high resolution to try and get the best possible result. Same calculation for off time, six events, six hour, six times 10 minutes times 60 seconds, that's 10 minutes there. Three seconds, 10 minutes, times 0 0.0056 milliamps plus 0 0.00012 milliamps or microamps, keeping it all in milliamps to keep the units constant. 
giving a result of 0.00572 milliampere hour and a total demand of 0.5868 milliampere hour. So every hour it will take 0.5868. Here's my expected battery life. So I've got a battery of two cells of 1500 milliampere hour, 3000 milliampere hour total, with a load of um, 0.568 milliampere hour between the ESP32 and the BME280, giving me um, an expected logging duration of 5,112 hours. Sounds a lot, but actually in days it's not very good in my opinion. So the expected duration is 213 days and now that's using a 3000 milliampere hour battery and in reality that's probably about 0.8, allow 0.8 um, reduction for capacity and it's worse than that. My conclusion is that ESP32 or an IoT data logger is not that efficient or well suited to long duration data logging. The power demands are too high to be practical. We keep changing batteries out in the field or the batteries would need to be quite large to operate the device and it can't run my my aim of my trial is that I can't run for two AA cells for very long um, not not for what I particularly want which is one year whereas conventional RF links 433 megahertz 868 megahertz RF links which are plentiful um, uh, take an exceptionally low amount of power and they can operate for many years on two AA cells. I've got many devices in my house that operate for at least two years on two AA cells. So most data loggers, recorders are best implemented using analog RF transmission techniques, um, classically uh, called on-off keying or AM, on-off keying of data or frequency modulation of the data. Not what I was expecting folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope you found it useful.